for two years I was battling with this thought and I was trying to understand the Trinity and I was trying to make myself believe the Trinity but after all, all of those intentions have failed miserably because I couldn't convince myself of a three-headed God. It didn't work. No matter how I looked at it, it just didn't add up, didn't make sense for me and therefore I was quite surprised, honestly quite shocked that my religion entailed that. This was a wake-up call for me because I was seeking God in its unity, in its oneness, if you will, and not God as some sort of deity that I cannot comprehend. I always remind myself of the saying, your God is not a God of confusion. So it was very confusing to me, after all. Hence, for the very first time in my life, I considered, you know what, I'm gonna read the enemy's book, the Quran. Why not? Because I started watching David Wood videos. And David Wood was so confident in his message that Muhammad was this degenerate guy and Islam was this evil, evil religion coming from Satan himself. The biggest deception known to mankind. The real Antichrist is Islam. So I got convinced even more about my own faith. I became arrogant, pompous. I said, God brought me back to orthodoxy, the real religion. He brought me back to the truth. And now I can truly see that Islam is from the devil. And because I have those eyes to see, I'm going to read the Quran and dismantle it. Many Muslims during that time reached out to me via YouTube, many followers of mine are Muslim, and said, hey, give it a shot. I said, no worries. I'm going to check it out and I'm going to find the devil in your book. So I opened the Quran and I started reading. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the merciful. That was surprising to me. It really was. I know to most Muslims this is simply common sense. They're wondering what I'm talking about. But for me as a Christian, I didn't remember a page in the Bible that addresses God like that first. I kept on reading and I noticed that every surah, every chapter starts like that. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the merciful. And I was impressed. The message is crystal clear. By reading the Quran itself, it doesn't posture up or pose as something else. It simply says what it is. It comes as a guidance. It comes as a clarification for those that want to see. Again, very, very powerful, I have to say. So I continued reading. So devote yourself to the religion of monotheism. The natural instinct, Allah, God, has instilled in mankind. Yet again, simple but powerful. It rings true to me. It makes sense that we have a natural disposition in which we seek God. I think anybody can relate to that. When you were a child, most of us, we knew that there was a God. The oneness of God was crystal clear to us. We didn't think about other deities. We didn't think about a three-headed God system. Yes, I was shocked because Islam for me was a violent religion, a religion of the enemy, a religion of the devil, not a religion of the oneness of God, the oneness of God that everybody comprehends. Even my father, who is a Christian Orthodox, he doesn't go to church, he never read the Bible. When I ask him about God, he tells me that God is one, that God is the most powerful. He understands that too intuitively. And I am of the firm conviction, sue me, but that you don't have to be an intellectual in order to understand God. Intellectualism, study, doctoral titles, all of that is fine here on earth in this creation. And you can impress other people with it, but instinctive understanding is embedded in you and even a beggar can understand God within. That's how I see it. And therefore the Quran confirmed that. For me it was quite shocking however to realize after reading the Quran that most Muslims that I've met in my life, not all, but most Muslims that I've met in my life, actually didn't follow the Quran at all. Actually weren't even considered real Muslims. The Quran talked about humility. The Quran talked against being boastful. The Quran talked about no compulsion in religion. The Quran talked about that God guides who he wills. Another powerful message yet again is, it is Allah's pattern, ongoing since the past. You will never find any change in Allah's pattern. That sentence really struck home because it showed the beautiful simplicity of the message. God's way is always the same. There is no change in the way, in the pattern of God. It is always the same, always accessible, the same way. And that of course made me think a lot about my own faith and about Christianity, thinking about the sacrifice of Jesus for us, 
him being crucified so our sins can be forgiven made me truly think about the people before him and people that didn't hear the message etc etc guys needless to say i obviously didn't find the devil within the quran but i found many many warnings about the devil the quran warns multiple times about the devil it clarifies how sneaky the devil is it warns you of the devil and it glorifies god over and over and over again honestly i tried to find the devil in the detail but i failed i couldn't find the devil within that scripture no matter how hard i looked now looking back i really wonder where david wood is getting his information from it's quite interesting because i was following david wood for roughly one and a half years and he was so adamant in his work warning all the people of bad bad islam but after reading the quran i couldn't find the devil in it i couldn't find the evil in it that was proclaimed by all the christian apologists i couldn't find the maliciousness the perversion within the quran i found a concise clear message within it so one day my daughter comes home second grade maybe she was telling me about this little boy who sat across from her his mom came to get him. She, she said she had scarves on her and she had a dress all the way down to her feet and you couldn't see her on nothing but her eyeballs. At that point, I snapped. Started spewing things out of my mouth that should never be said in front of children or anything. She didn't say anything. It was the look on her face. I remember my daughter looking at me like I was absolutely the craziest person on the face of the earth. She was my little buddy. Yeah, she used to say we were road dogs. <laughs> I know, I, I, I saw it in her eyes. I made her question that love. And that's when the light bulb came on. I decided to give the people of this community one more chance. So I went to the Islamic Center, see a gentleman in the shoe room taking off his shoes. He looks at me and he smiles. He said, can I help you? And I said, yeah, I want you to teach me about Islam. So he went and he gave me a Quran. Read this, come back when you have questions. So I did. And I would see things in the book. I'd be like, there it is. I got him right there. Explain that to me. And they would. This was a, a kind of awakening. Long story short, eight weeks after that first day I stepped into the Islamic Center, I became a Muslim. I'm a Muslim, a veteran, and a proud American. I had learned that I was completely wrong about everything that I felt. You know, Judaism had a message, Christianity had a message, Islam had a message. Funny thing is, though, it was the same message. It was about peace, and it was about love. Please join me in welcoming Mr. McKinney. My big thing is now to stop the hate. Nothing good has ever come out of hatred. I've done too many things. I've hurt a lot of people. I have to live with that. But if I can stop somebody else on the path of non-forgiveness, I won. Finally, we need to address one last issue. Some would say that if it's not copied from the Bible, maybe it was copied from different religious books that were available in this time period. Let's take a look at some of the available knowledge back then. If you read the Atharva Veda 4.11.1, you will find that there is a big ball holding up the earth. If you read the Atharva Veda 6.44.3, you will find that God drinks urine. If you read Rig Veda 158, you will find that the sun is driving a two-wheeled, horse-drawn vehicle and getting pulled by seven horses. This is why the sun is moving. And what about the hundreds of scientific facts written in the Quran? How did Muhammad know all that? Maybe he talked to the best scientists of his era, right? Maybe Aristotle? Aristotle thought that the brain was a radiator. The blood flows inside it to cool down, which kept all important heart from overheating. Aristotle believed that men have more teeth than women. Even though he was married, he must never have counted. Aristotle thought that worms grow to be snakes. Aristotle thought that semen converts period blood into solid, like converting milk into cheese. This is how new life begins. Aristotle thought that the upper part of the fetus is created first, then the lower part. Then Muhammad didn't copy from Aristotle. Maybe Galen? Galen said that there is a dwarf embryo in the male sperm which is nourished by the female semen until it grows to be a fetus. Galen said that the semen is white blood. Galen and Hippocrates strongly believed that the right testicle made the boy sperm and the left testicle made the girl sperm. 
As early as 330 BC, Aristotle prescribed dying of the left testicle in men wishing to have boys. Until the French Revolution, men were making surgeries to remove the left testicle because it was believed that the right testicle produced boys and the left one produced girls. Hippocrates thought that babies are created from heat and the woman's womb is like an oven that heats the baby to create its bones. That is why the Quran describes the stages of creation of the human fetus from sperm to baby exactly as if it was written next to a modern fetal ultrasonic machine. They attach to the epithelial cells lining the oviduct where they stay and can quickly detach and move when ovulation gets closer. In short, they can stay attached in the woman for a couple of days at least before she ovulates, detach and move closer to the egg when ovulation does occur and then attach again to the egg. It's an uphill battle all the way until one strong and determined sperm manages to attach itself to the egg. Within seconds, the sperm is engulfed by the egg. This is a process called phagocytosis by scientists, meaning that the sperm is ingested or engulfed by the egg. After this happens, the sperm's nuclear envelope disintegrates and the sperm and egg become a one-cell embryo, as reported by Story in 1995 and Evans in 2001 respectively. When you think about all that, it's hard not to admit that embryology is truly a miraculous process. And just as miraculous as the process itself is the fact that the Quran, a book revealed in the 6th century, described this intricate process so accurately all those years ago. How did the author of the Quran know? Do you still think Muhammad copied from science books? Tales of Miletus said that the originating principle of nature was a single material substance, water. All Chinese culture thought that human joints are 365, like the number of days in the year. And this was corrected by Prophet Muhammad to exactly 360 joints 1400 years ago, and then by Nature magazine in 2020 to be exactly 360 joints. Sorry, Nature Magazine, you are 1400 years late to this discovery. All of these religious and scientific mistakes were first corrected by the illiterate Muhammad in the middle of the desert 1400 years ago, and again these days using modern technology. Miracles are not part of historical legends. You have your own miracle right now. You just refuse to read it because they told you not to read it on television. Quran breaks the logical expectations and breaks the boundaries of what is possible for a man by having a lot of information that in no way can be written in it unless it is from the one who created knowledge. The one who created everything. We provided more than 50 examples for you in our playlist Real Miracles in the 21st Century. Link is in the description and first comment. People reject Islam because it's from the Middle East. People think that Islam is the religion of the Middle East and Christianity is the religion of Europe. Actually, Christianity is from the Middle East too. Jesus was from the Middle East. Even Paul, who said you don't have to follow the laws like Jesus anymore and who claimed to talk to God, was from Turkey and claimed to talk to God in Syria. It's not about nationalism. It's not about us versus them. It's about what is the truth. And if you're taking your religion from the Middle East anyway, at least take the correct one. If you consider for one moment, just one second, that there is an Akhirah, yeah? You don't believe in it, but what if you're wrong? If you consider that for one second that you are wrong, is it not better to take a uh, proportion? Like when you wear your seatbelt, take precaution, give religion a moment. And I'm not talking about a uh, religion of different hodgepodge beliefs and rituals, I'm talking about Islam. Give the Quran time, read it. If after you read it, you disbelieve in it, then that's up to you. But if you want, if you do read it and something changes in your life like it did for me, then it's only going to be for the better. And before you ask, there is not a single country in the world right now which follows the teachings of Quran. There is no country on earth right now that represents the teachings of God in the Quran. What you see now is them not following the Quran, not the opposite. Judge the book, don't judge the people.
Every year, hundreds of thousands of people around the world from different countries, different continents, and different languages accept Quran as their purpose and way of life as soon as they just read it once. See how the number of believers is increasing very, very rapidly recently? People are tired of lies after lies. Whenever they finally find the truth, they hold on it and never let go. What do you expect after you read the words of God who created you? As a Christian that converted to Islam myself, I could tell you that there's so many people out there that don't even know about Islam. People might look at Muslims and think something they've heard, they've seen, whatever. No, forget all that. What I want to tell you right now is what Muslims believe, and that is that God, the creator of everything, Allah, almighty God, he is only one without any partners, only one. Do not say that he is a trinity. Do not say that he has equals. This is shirk. This is the unforgivable sin, subhanAllah. Number two, if you believe in the oneness of Allah and you believe in the prophets that he sent, and that includes Adam, the first human, all the way to Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as the last and final messenger, subhanAllah. And if you believe in the holy books, the revelations Allah sent prophets with, like Prophet Moses, Prophet Jesus, <laughs> Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, may peace be upon them all. And Muslims believe in the angels. There are angels with us at all times. And last but not least, Muslims believe in the day of judgment. We believe that after the world has ended, all humans will be resurrected. Allah will raise us all up and that is when the day of judgment will start. And we will all be judged for how we live this life on earth. Don't try to find an excuse to ignore God's message to you. God created you for a purpose. At least know what is it. Don't worry, it's not like what you heard in the media. See with your own eyes you have nothing to lose. Quran is the only book that broke the barriers of time and the barriers of knowledge. Quran is the only book that can be called perfect and contains the cure for our social diseases and hatred towards each other and division. 1% of the people now own 99% of Earth's resources, while billions are dying from poverty, hunger, diseases and wars over man-made borders. This is not the world we want to live in. Quran is the only book that can fix all that. Quran is the only unchanged book written by the most wise, the creator of us, the one who knows what is best for us and what is wrong. Do you still refuse to read it once before you decide for yourself if you believe it or not? He says, well, what do you think about the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him? And I said, well, uh, he says, do you think he's a prophet? I said, yeah, I do. I said, I think he's a prophet. He had a word also, but I don't believe that was for me. I believe that it was for a different uh, group of people. And uh, he looked at me and he stuck his finger in my face and he says, you're a Muslim, man. And uh, then I, I returned the finger and I said, no. I said, I'm not a Muslim. And my name and that word will never be connected. So uh, that day there was something inside me. It, it was like a, a dot. There was some type of dot that had been put in my heart. So back in the day, I had my old Packard Bell. You know, it was uh, not many people know what a Packard Bell is today. They don't exist. And uh, so I would I would go on there and I would ask Jeeves, which Jeeves was the, the Google of today back then. So I would go and ask Jeeves, uh, just type in Islamic topics. One day I'd come home from work and uh, I was, you know, just, just following my normal routine. Come home from work, take off my shoes and everything, get comfortable and sat down at my computer. You know, what is Islam? You know, give the five pillars of Islam. When I read them, for some reason, I. I read La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah and I said I believe that and then I read uh, you know make Hajj you know to fast to pay zakat to pray every pillar that I read it was like something had opened I can't explain it it was like if my heart was being painted or a light was opening inside me then once I had finished reading all the five pillars I knew that I couldn't go any other direction that was the only direction that I could go and uh, there was a, a link to, uh, it said how to be Muslim so you, I clicked that link and there was a small PDF that opened up I'm holding this piece of paper and then I fought, I went to the bathroom I took my shahada in a bathroom uh, by myself I went in the bathroom I la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah if you need help reading the last and final message from our creator to us, we can assign someone who knows Arabic to read it with you and to answer all of your questions for free. Just join our Facebook and Discord and contact us to schedule your daily voice or video call, whatever you wish. Links are in the description and first comment. We will answer all of your questions and if after reading it you're not convinced, then no harm, no foul. You can just go back to believing whatever you want to believe, knowing that you did what you should and you searched for God in every way possible.